relatively quiet first few days of the year, at least on the company front, we can look forward to a torrent of corporate updates in the coming week, particularly from the retail sector, where a number of firms will be providing details on their all-important Christmas trading. Notable statements to watch for, well, they include online electrical and white goods seller AO World and Majestic Wine on the 8th of January, Jules, Morrison's and Topps Tiles on Tuesday the 9th, then on the 10th, we've got Shoe Zone, Supergroup and Ted Baker taking centre stage. And then, or before a further retail flourish on Thursday the 11th, when we get Debenhams, Marks and & Spencer and Tesco also telling us whether shoppers were festive or Scrooge-like in the fourth quarter of 2017. Now, all of these should be very informative, and that's before we get to updates from a trio of house builders, Persimmon, Taylor Wimpy and Barrett on the 9th, 10th and 11th respectively, and a trio of recruitment consultants, Robert Walters, Page Group and Hayes, also on the 9th, 10th and 11th in that order. But for me, the seasonal statement which could cause the biggest fuss in the week ahead is the third quarter update due from Sainsbury on Wednesday, January the 10th. It's fair to say that Sainsbury shares, well, didn't really have a particularly good 2017. As we can see here, they ended the year a fraction below where they began it, even as analysts began to warm to Chief Executive Mike Coop's big strategic move of 2016 when he and Sainsbury pounced to buy Argos on a home retail. Also, like-for-like -like growth at the core UK retail operation began to improve and sales at Argos rose, but for all of that, the shares didn't budge. Now, two factors may, however, be weighing on sentiment toward the FTSE grocer, explaining why the shares didn't do so well. First, Sainsbury's is still locked in this battle for market share and consumers' wallets, not just with Tesco's, Morrison's and Asda, but with the insurgent discounters Aldi and Lidl. Figures from consultants Kantar World Panel did show that Sainsbury sales rose 2% year-on-year in the three months to 3rd of December, but that was still slower than Tesco, let alone Aldi and Lidl, with the result that Sainsbury's lost a little bit more market share, down 0.2 percentage points to 16.3. Secondly, Analysts have been worrying about inflation and how it's been outstripping wage increases, potentially crimping consumer spending power. Again, according to Kantar World Panel, grocery inflation reached 3.6% in the 12 weeks to 3rd of December, a four-year high. But a comparison of that with sales figures suggests volumes are therefore falling as shoppers adjust to higher prices. All of this makes the timing of this third quarter update particularly interesting. The headline number will be like-for-like -like sales growth for retail. Although we've got a pretty limited history including Argos, we can see the momentum has been uneven over the past year or so. The second quarter growth figure was just 0.6%. Attention will then switch to the total retail sales growth numbers, the group as a whole, and as we can see the recent mixed trend here as well. Growth slowed from 2.7% in Q1 to just 0.9% in Q2. Analysts will then look to the breakdown in total sales growth including Argos for grocery, general merchandise and clothing, where again we see the most recent four quarters here. Note how groceries slowed in Q2 when general merchandising fell, although clothing did perform strongly last time out. Also, watch out for any comments on full-year guidance from boss Mike Coop. The current analysts' consensus estimates are group sales of £28.3 billion, and that compares to £26.2 billion a year ago, pre-tax profit of £546 million against £503 million on a stated basis, and a third straight dividend cut from 10.2p to 9.8p. That follows a, a reduction in the first half payment from 3.6 to 3.1 pence a share. So at least expectations are still pretty low. Thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you next time.